Hello, thank you for joining us again in DEFCONF. Uh, now we will continue with another session, uh, which will be led by Pavel Picha, who comes from Czech Technical University in Prague. Enjoy and welcome. Thank you for introduction and good afternoon to ladies and gentlemen here uh, or on the stream. Uh, my presentation uh, refers to our long journey through the work on CAN and real-time and so on. Mm -hmm. So it is quite dense and uh, if you have more questions and uh, want to know more about specific project and so on, then please uh, take the contacts and uh, contact me later and so on. Uh, all the hardware and uh, software which we have built for this area is uh, open source, or you can find uh, documentation for it and so on. So you can reuse the code. And uh, the content of today's presentation is some short introduction, what it is can, who knows what it is can and how it works here in the, uh, about arbitration, can, can FD, Oh, I, I have uh, make very short this uh, introduction because I expect that there will be more people who knows a little more about the CAN. But anyway, I try to introduce the technology and uh, then I start to speak about our uh, open work in this area and uh, then about our interesting uh, uh, open source uh, project of uh, CAN FD a controller which can be even implemented in the FPGA or in the hardware. There has already been some attempt to uh, go through the synthesis in the hardware and then I will speak about uh, real-time and latency testing. So for the introduction, uh, as you know probably, uh, Ken has been introduced in 1983 by Bosch uh, company. And the main goal for this uh, communication, packet-based communication, was to somehow simplify uh, the wiring inside the cars, because uh, today you have so many signals that you will have uh, thousands of wires coming from one position to another to switch something on and off, and uh, they decide to multiplex it uh, on the uh, wire through the packet communication. And initial KN10 design allows us up to 2048 uh, identifiers, which can hold, each can transfer up to eight bytes of the actual information. So in the fact, uh, six, uh, 64 uh, single bit, yes, and no signals. So for example, into one, one message you can um, distribute all the switching of lights of that day uh, uh, standard car or vehicle. Today when you have dimming and uh, back channels for measuring of uh, the voltage on the lights and uh, pre diagnostic of profiler and so on, uh, you can find that even those 2048 messages is not so much. So they extended uh, the support to 29 bits in uh, 1991 uh, in CAN 2.0. And what is interesting on this uh, communication is that it has a deterministic uh, uh, media arbitration which is based on the ID priority. So as the message has uh, low, uh, lower ID, it has higher priority. And uh, okay, I have skipped this in my presentation today, but uh, I, okay. But it works such way that basically at each bit which is sent from the identifier, there is a running uh, wired end uh, uh, function. And uh, that station which uh, sends a given bit with a low value, zero wins, and the other ones, uh, uh, stops uh, sending a frame. So this way it is ensured that only one station succeed and send uh, the desired frame on the bus and even that one which uh, abandons the sending can receive a given frame. Uh, this uh, solution of the uh, uh, base collision avoidance or resolution 
uh, it has its price, and it is that the signal has to be distributed through a whole wiring uh, forward and back uh, to detect uh, the collision deterministically. So it has a disadvantage that at this phase, uh, we cannot uh, speed up communication above some limit. For example, if you decide that in typical car, single bus uh, uh, network or single bus uh, channel uh, doesn't exceed a 30 meters, then you can go with the communication frequency up to the uh, one megabit per second. But you cannot go uh, faster because in such case, uh, you cannot resolve uh, the collision because there is some time uh, when the signal is distributed through the wires. Uh, okay, so this is the price and this means that the throughput is not so great. So then there has been uh, provided a new version, uh, extended version, which is called a CAN FD, flexible data rate CAN, which uh, uses slower communication with a deterministic resolution only for the standing of the ID of the message. And then actual data are sent at the higher bitrate. Typically in today cars, uh, the can every frame uh, can send up to 64 bytes, not 64 bits as the previous version. And uh, usually it is used with uh, 500 kilobits per second for the arbitration phase. But during the data uh, transfer phase, uh, the frequency or speed is uh, increased to uh, uh, two megabits per second, or in theory, it can be even eight megabits per second, but in automotive, usually two megabits per second are used. So basically, the arbitration is run at the low uh, speed, then we switch to the data rate inside the middle uh, of the control field, uh, where is the information that now is the switch, then the actual data are running uh, at that high speed, then there is a quite precise uh, cyclic redundancy check field, which ensures that uh, corrupted messages um, is uh, spotted and that there is uh, no possibility that, or very low probability that we uh, consider a corrupted message as correct. And then there is an interesting field, uh, which is run again at the uh, initial speed and it is used for the confirmation of the correctness of the reception of the frame. So in theory, if uh, one of all units finds that the, there is a problem with the frame, then this unit uh, uh, sends a NAC, non-acknowledged uh, uh, field, and uh, this way ensures that no unit considers the uh, message as correctly transferred. So in theory, you should have all units in the scenes uh, with uh, global view of the messages and so on. So it is big, big advantage. Um, if some unit misbehaves, then uh, it is, uh, uh, it automatically counts that uh, it is necessary to, to uh, disconnect it and basically it uh, falls into the passive mode and so on. So, uh, as we have seen, uh, can every uh, extend the data field to 64 bytes. Then today there is an extra long uh, version which allows to sending up to 2 kilobytes and uh, 48 bytes uh, in the land messages, uh, which is used to encapsulate even the uh, Ethernet traffic inside the vehicles onto the CAN network in the, in the vehicle. Uh, it is a question how much it will be used, uh, uh, but it allows to switch to even faster data rate, which is symmetric uh, up to 10 megabits per second, and uh, it uh, limits the actual part which is sent at that uh, low bit rate for the arbitration to really a minimum to allow the resolution of the priority, and then the rest is sent at high, uh, high speed, uh, high bit rate. Uh, and even the IDs are not sent during the arbitration now, but uh, they are uh, 
uh, move to the fast field. And the arbitration is only um, eight, uh, 12 bit at this time. Okay, the support in the Linux uh, systems, because uh, Linux are used today for uh, industrial application, for automotive, and so on. And the uh, first implementation was different vendors uh, provided uh, drivers for CAN. And uh, those has been usually integrated as a standard character device. Uh, we have started it in 2003 at our university to build some Lincoln driver, which was uh, vendor neutral, and uh, it was part of some bigger uh, project uh, of open source confer, uh, components for real time application. And uh, uh, it has been used uh, at some companies up to 2018. At least at 2018, I have get some feedback and uh, support requests and so on. Uh, and it was character based, but uh, because uh, Ken is in the fact a uh, networking standard, uh, then uh, Volkswagen, uh, together with Spengutronics company, started uh, development of the socket Ken, which is uh, uh, socket communication based interface to the Ken hardware and. Uh, Okay, so you can use typical select and uh, bind and so on on the CAN network, even that uh, it is a little special because the concept of addresses is not so clear or so it's, it's a little different from the, from the um, uh, standard TCP IP communication and so on. And this solution has been accepted at 2008 into the Linux mainline. Uh, we have uh, helped uh, in this uh, design with uh, computation on bit rates and some other uh, people converted parts of our uh, Lincoln support even to the socket can. And uh, if I return back to my first uh, experiment with scan, we have built some uh, ISA bus card in uh, 1997 for our uh, RS-485 uh, communication without instruments, but we have added there a block to allow to communicate even with a CAN. Then when we have built our motion control, uh, control system based on uh, Motorola 68,376 uh, 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 chip, uh, which has a token controller, then we have started to play with the CAN. Then at the university, we have more PC-104 system for that OSERA project, and uh, we have developed a Lincoln driver based on it. Then we have ported it to the PCI CAN from Quasar and uh, to the cards from ESD, and uh, it has uh, accumulated support from many, many uh, different hardware and contributors and so on. Uh, we have even implemented uh, drivers for uh, Unicontrols company, which use a VME-based uh, system, first based on uh, OS uh, uh, 9, but when the support of OS 9 was uh, terminated, they switch it to the Linux. They look at the Linux as a childish toy and loud as us when we speak about the can and Linux and so on, but uh, when they cannot use any more uh, OS 9, then they have been very happy that they have a support and they use our Lincoln in the railway vehicles and other application for many years. Okay, then we have uh, attempted to build a converter between the USB and serial uh, and uh, CAN communication, and uh, for this we have already uh, built a uh, Lincoln support and then even a socket can drivers. Uh, then we have uh, worked on higher levels of the can communication, uh, which is, for example, uh, can open standard, which is standard how to map uh, parameters and uh, service object to some numbers and indexes and allow to maintain uh, industrial drivers, uh, uh, motor drivers, or I.O. extenders, and so on. 
And uh, we have built this system in such a way that it was uh, quite generic because for each device uh, which uh, can open protocol, so it is that protocol above the basic can layer, you should get electronic data sheet. And we have decided that we will build a, a general purpose device and library which can read this uh, data sheet and uh, mimic uh, actual hardware. So, for example, we have some uh, Vago I.O. terminals uh, which can open, so we take the data sheet and uh, run our virtual uh, device. Virtual, but not so virtual, we will see uh, later. And there is a state machine and some, uh, some actual interface to the drivers, and our driver solution was done in such a way that it can connect to uh, Nutix, uh, uh, Lincoln or socket can drivers and this is how it looks like inside the can open device. So basically uh, there is some object dictionary which is described by the EDS. So for example there is where to read uh, how many I.O. ports are available on a given device. Uh, ability to access uh, actual I.O. ports. Then it is possible to map those uh, those uh, uh, objects to the process data messages, which is very interesting because on can open basically actual process uh, variables can be transferred without any need of uh, overhead. They are basically sent directly in the row can frames uh, because uh, uh, it is possible to um, allocate for them ID and then through this mapping there is a generic mechanism how you can uh, map uh, different bits from different variables to the actual location in the process messages. And uh, uh, our library allows to interface uh, with different uh, CAN drivers providers and standard on Linux or even on a small microcontroller based devices. Uh, and because we want to connect it even to the hardware to mimic the whole device uh, completely, then we have allowed to load uh, dynamically uh, libraries and describe connection between those objects which are used for the communication to the actual real hardware and we have an I.O. device built this way. And we have built a device which, uh, or software which allows to monitor such network, which allows to communicate and set different parameters uh, um, and makes, a, in the fact, a gateway between the TCP IP communication and the scan open communication. And we have provided a Java-based monitor and Qt-based monitor for this. And we have there a demonstration, for example, of I.O. module when we have uh, uh, used uh, Linux comedy uh, day drivers which allows to connect to I.O. devices. So basically, really, our in virtual, real, it is a question, uh, software can operate exactly the same way as a standard uh, PLC controller, uh, which is uh, providing this functionality of uh, can open extender or I.O. device. And we have written even comedy uh, drivers uh, for some hardware from some uh, data acquisition cards, uh, which has been uh, released uh, by one Czech company. And those has been those drivers has been uh, accepted to the main line. So I skip this, or we will skip this uh, exact example because uh, it is quite complex because we can even uh, emulate a whole that system inside a QMU. This is the way how we can access from the monitor different variables in this system. We have there even example how to uh, run a profile which allows to control a brushless DC or permanent synchronous magnet motor, steppers motor and so on. And all this can be done with uh, our uh, libraries and uh, uh, connected to the hardware and so on. Okay, uh, then started our attempt to uh, provide a simulate or first attempt to uh, implement a CAN support for RTMS, which is a, a real-time executive for multiprocessor systems, which is uh, designed initially 
for uh, US Army and now is used by European Space Agency and uh, NASA. Uh, but when we started work on the CAN in this area, there was a problem that there is not a common hardware. So for this reason, we have uh, started a Google Summer of Code with one of students and implemented at the end uh, the QEMU uh, emulation of the CAN hardware. So today you can run a standard QMU because it has got into 2018 into the QMU mainline. So you can run a standard QMU uh, with standard Linux. Uh, it, uh, you can specify when you start a QMU that you want to have there a PCI-based card in your ARM or uh, MIPS or x86-based system and uh, drivers automatically load and allows to interconnect a CAN bus uh, inside that QMU. So basically run there the software of some engine control unit or something like that and connect it with external uh, hardware and external world through the drivers and real hardware to the uh, standard bus. Uh, and uh, because at our uh, university or faculty, there was a strong group which support uh, uh, CAN for Unicontrol, Škoda Auto, Volkswagen, and uh, build the test equipment for this area, which needs not only to have the access to the network, but needs even <coughs> ability to alternate uh, the actual frames uh, and uh, inject the errors and so on. So you cannot use a third party uh, fix it silicon for this. Then uh, there started a project by Andre Ile in 2015 to upgrade these designs for uh, uh, Ken FD, that extended version. And uh, at that time, I was done at my company a consultation for one uh, Volkswagen subsidiary with their FPGA based uh, Zinc hardware and uh, they want to connect it to a multiple CAN buses and found that it is a big problem to get uh, MCAN licenses from uh, uh, Bosch and that MCAN core, which is standard CAN FD core provided by Bosch, is too big that it doesn't fit into their uh, FPGA in the number of channels which they need. So at that time I have started the project and uh, negotiated that uh, the, the subsidiary of Volkswagen bought the uh, design which has started as that experimental tester design at the university, make it open source and paid for uh, adapting it for uh, their specific uh, needs. And this is how uh, CTU can FD core has uh, uh, slowly developed into the full featured can FD controller. Uh, which uh, is fully described, you can find the sources uh, and uh, it uh, allows to work with uh, uh, FIFO on the input, connect to the socket can uh, between two, or up from two up to eight uh, uh, TX buffers to send the frames to the network. Uh, and it uh, is uh, implemented such a way that it can be connected to the uh, a XI bus uh, on some Xilinx Zinc FPGAs, or it can be connected to APB, to HB. It, it, there was even attempt of some people and contributed connection to Litex, which is now used in the hobby project with uh, FPGAs. And uh, this uh, design has included even some advanced features for the testing. So for example, uh, bus monitoring mode and restricted operation mode and so on. So it is interesting even for such applications. Uh, and uh, when we finish the project for uh, Volkswagen, then uh, Andrei Ile, who is main author and at that time a graduate student at our university, continued on the project uh, on his own time and uh, built a complex infrastructure to allow uh, full testing uh, and uh, basically get a very near to full compliance. Or in the fact, we think that we are compliant, but we do not have uh, enough money at this moment or need collect too many money to uh, ask for the real uh, 
uh, real certification. So it is waiting for some group of people, companies who has interest to, to join forces and resources for this. But we have our own tests which, which uh, are mostly or which, which are passed by this. Okay, and uh, because we want to have even emulator, then I have run a Bashor thesis with one of my students, and we have implemented a emulation of our oven, uh, can FD controller, and it is now part of the mainline QEMU, so you can connect uh, uh, even the hardware through a can FD and run in the fact in the virtual environment a whole. Uh, engine control unit and so on. And we have uh, support for uh, Zinc uh, hardware. Those are our education kits for PCI Express uh, FPGAs from Altera, uh, Cyclone Nano. Uh, there has been some third party attempt to connect it to Litex. Uh, it has been ported even to some space uh, grade FPGAs uh, and some diagnostic tools and so on. Uh, one of our students has uh, used our design as a basis for this, his own testing of the open source toolchain to uh, transfer a design to the silicon and so on. Unfortunately, we do not have the money to, uh, uh, to get the silicon yet, but we have got even some offers. Uh, there are some uh, companies uh, which has done uh, this as as uh, exercise how to get it into the state when it can be run on the ASIC, and uh, we have even fault tolerant version which is used in the space already. And when you run uh, some communication or at, or you care about a motion control application or something like that, then you need to ensure that uh, your latencies in the system do not damage the stability and safety of your control application. Uh, maybe you can know uh, OSCDL uh, quality assurance farm on real time, which is a very good service, which provides a precise testing of the fully preemptive kernels and standard kernels, but for standard uh, Linux kernel, you cannot expect anything. Uh, there can be a millisecond, 10 millisecond latency if you plug USB or uh, HDMI cable and so on. But for a fully preemptive kernel, we have been able to run our uh, CAN stuff and some control application up to 30 kilohertz uh, with uh, no uh, detected misses of the sampling. So you can see this is uh, some slow arm zinc. In the fact, this is I have to uh, from their uh, farm uh, the latency plots for this uh, hardware, which I have here. And uh, they do the testing for a long, long time. So their long-term testing through the many years shows that well-maintained, uh, fully preemptive kernel can achieve, okay, you cannot do a mathematical proof that uh, there will never be a longer latency. But you can see that in this logarithmic scale, if there is a single uh, overshot of the latency or jitter bigger than 100, something like 20 microseconds on this hardware, slow hardware, then you will spot it. But we have decided that it is necessary to provide some such guarantee even for a CAN communication and because our uh, our system allows to measure even up to 10 nanoseconds the times of arrival of the frames and so on. Uh, we have decided that we switch our older attempt when we have done some uh, assessment of uh, can every gateways and uh, drivers infrastructure and system calls for a Volkswagen that we switch it to our new hardware. And it was task of one of my students uh, who has finished the thesis uh, last year, uh, Maki Vasilevsky, who added uh, the uh, timestamping into our driver and uh, a follow up uh, by bachelor thesis of Pavel Hronek has finished in the latency testing on the web system. And basically we send the can message on one bus from one system we receive it by the second uh, CAN FD channel, which uh, precisely uh, measures the time. 
But then there is a device under the test which receives the cane frame and only functionality is to go through the kernel or even in the user space and send it on the other bus. And then we measure the another time. And this way we can exactly measure a duration which is uh, caused by the latency inside the drivers and Linux kernel and so on. And this is the test system uh, which runs a daily test of a mainline Linux kernel and on the real-time patched version of the kernel. And this is overview. We can do the uh, latency uh, inspection of individual runs and uh, see uh, latency plots. Uh, we have there uh, this heat map, or we can see again this long time uh, plot uh, where we see uh, latencies, how many messages basically uh, exceed a given latency. You see that there are some, still some mirror problems. And uh, it runs each day, and you can find uh, materials for our work. And uh, okay, in in this area, but I work even on some project for European Space Agency for uh, real-time control of uh, different devices. At this moment, uh, on the roof of ESA uh, in the. Uh, in the Netherlands is running our motion control to track some satellites and so on. So, okay, so it is all from my side. If you have interest, take the uh, reflets, ask. I ha can ha even demonstrate something for you here. We have included in the, our design even the uh, logic analyzer so we can see the signals on the real bus, on the virtual buses down to the 10, micro, uh, 10 nanosecond uh, resolution and so on. So, okay, thank you for your attendance. And if you have some questions. Yes, we have work. Uh, okay, question is, uh, if we have uh, work uh, on the security issues with the CAN, uh, we cooperate uh, with Oliver Hardkop, if you know him, from Volkswagen. He is um, behind the start of socket CAN, and he has designed a message-authenticated CAN uh, variant, and we have done the second implementation. So they done their oven, and we at the university has done the second one to uh, prove that there is possibility to do the interoperability. Uh, but it was at uh, 10 days, so it was based on that 8 byte messages, which makes the thing quite tricky because it was necessary. Uh, basically, it works for short messages. It was possible to uh, provide the cryptography directly with the signal in the 8 bytes. But for the longer messages, it works such way that message has been sent. And if the receiving unit react on the message, but then later didn't get the information that it was correct through the another message, which has a signature, then it basically need to abandon the functionality or signal that there is a problem. But usually, if you have this latency, something like 10 milliseconds or something like that, then reacting on the incorrect message for so short time is usually not a problem. So, and today on can every it could be a better. So, but at this moment I have not uh, work on this area. But he's working. Uh, Oliver Hardcop is now part of uh, security team of Volkswagen. So we can ask him directly. Maybe he is looking now. <laughs> Maybe we can have answer uh, on the chat. Uh, okay, it is uh, okay. It is propaganda that it is steering to Ethernet, but you know, today uh, many new processor units has up to 14 can channels on one device. So basically, yes, uh, I, I'm not sure if that attempt to send the TCP/IP frames through the can is good idea or not. Maybe not. <laughs> okay. Uh, but uh, uh, for sure, for those small nests, 
around the processor where you need many communication channels which are deterministic, real time and so on, then the can is still maybe growing its uh, area of, of uh, application. And today, for example, I know that some companies are uh, developing a directly can FD light based chips. So directly something like was I square C, but I square C is not good idea for automotive because it uh, doesn't uh, protect the messages and so on and and so on. It is it is it is good for a connection of the chip on a single board but not for anything more. But today there are attempts to use uh, can FD light for this area, for example. That you will have chips which are directly, which has to be cheap, they have directly finite state machine inside the chip and uh, they can be connected to standard can FD controllers and you have a chips. Uh, Texas Instruments has now new Citara versions with 14 can FD. So they probably do not think that they would not be used. <laughs> you know, because if they have so many uh, interfaces in the hardware, then... Uh, at this moment, uh, we only do monitoring and to see what happens. We have, uh, we have already catch uh, one error on the fully preemptive kernel, which has been resolved in one week uh, by the people from Linutronics. Uh, so uh, it was a fast reaction, but it was, uh, it was hard for basically this disk. Yeah. Yeah, okay, we, uh, this is uh, available online, so you can test it, you can... Yeah, okay, so uh, uh, you can, uh, you can, okay, at this moment at the university we do not have the, uh, we can run uh, maybe 10 kernel tests, uh, builds and tests per day or something like that, and we have limited amount of the hardware, but we are uh, in the contact with OSCDL, which has that quality assurance farm for a real time, and uh, they plan to test our solution on their uh, farm. So basically company, which uh, means uh, doing the business uh, seriously, then can ask OSCDL to run their hardware there and uh, provide them a feedback uh, on their development branches. A our solution is open, uh, fully, it can be run even on different hardware than on this one. Basically you need a two uh, reasonable can FD controllers with precise timestamping. And you can run our system in-house. Okay. <laughs> okay, so thank you.